Have you ever wondered what happens to all the precipitation after a storm? In a perfect world, the Earth's surface absorbs the precipitation in a happy equilibrium of give and take, but that isn't always the case. Located along the east coast of the United States is the Delaware River Basin that runs between the states of Delaware, New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. These states make up the Delaware River Basin that attributes to collecting water from the surrounding tributaries, rivers, ongoing rainfall events, and other factors. Land cover in these particular areas varies from wetland and forest to more urbanized and farmland regions. Living in this region, I have personally witnessed flooding events due to elevation differences, overflowing basins and watersheds, as well as the simple fact that water has nowhere to go. So when these areas in particular experience heavy rain events, the outcome can be disturbing to residents and the levels of the Delaware River. The result? Flooding. The Delaware River itself is the longest undammed river in the United States located east of the Mississippi. The river extends approximately 330 miles from east to west towards the Delaware River Bay and then opens into the Atlantic Ocean. The river is fed by more than 2,000 tributaries, including 216 major ones of the East Coast, the largest being the Schuylkill and Lehigh Rivers, located in Pennsylvania. The words watershed and basin can be used synonymously, although a basin is a large watershed made up of smaller sub-watersheds. To keep it simple in terms, a watershed can be described as an area of land that drains into a particular stream. When the East Coast experiences rain events, especially along the Delaware River, the precipitation will run off of the land of higher elevations and into the surrounding bodies of water that encompass the Delaware River Basin. The land cover, as mentioned, around the Delaware River varies from tree canopies in the northern portions of the basin to more urbanized areas in the southern sections. There are more impervious surfaces occurring in the more developed, urbanized sections of the basin, creating more runoff and flooding events. Taking a look at this map depicting the Delaware River Basin elevations and river networks on the left, and Horton Stream order and location of dams on the right, we can see the layout more clearly of the basin's construction. The darker colors on the left side show that elevation levels are higher than those depicted in green, allowing a visualization of high to low. When a rain event occurs in this area, the precipitation in most cases has nowhere to go but to follow the pitch of the land. This creates runoff that can then spill into nearby tributaries or rivers. The East Coast experiences precipitation events most strongly during hurricane season as hurricanes make their way inland from the Atlantic Ocean. With such a variation in elevations that encompass the Delaware River Basin, flooding becomes the result. Although, as seen in the Horton Stream Order, many of these rivers are regulated by dams and reservoirs, but these can also reach their maximum levels, resulting in overflow. The Delaware River, in particular, has experienced a magnitude of flooding events in the past, allowing for research to be done to further evaluate the steps to be taken to ingest and improve the Delaware River Basin and the intake and outflow of its streams, dams, and reservoirs. Since precipitation events cannot be controlled, studies should be taken into account to accommodate future events and prevent damage to those living in the low elevated areas around the Delaware River. This pie chart demonstrates the land use of the area encompassing the Delaware River Basin. With the amount of forest lands that make up the area of the Delaware River Basin regions, the earth can only absorb so much precipitation into the ground. The groundwater that lies beneath the surface varies in the states of Delaware, New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania that make up the Delaware River Basin, and with the ongoing precipitation events, the groundwater levels increase. These areas that surround the Delaware River, Lehigh River, Schuylkill River, and Lackawaxen River also vary in elevation, resulting in runoff during and following rain events. With some of these regions surrounding the rivers being encompassed by wetlands and forests, the ground is already saturated due to groundwater elevations being shallow. With heavy rainfall along the basin, the areas inhabiting reservoirs become flooded, not being able to keep up with the large precipitation events and resulting in overflow of the reservoirs and basin, 
which can then further result in flooding. There were three major flooding events that should be mentioned when regarding the Delaware River Basin and the flooding that can occur due to the already saturated soils along the Delaware River. The first event took place in 2004, which many know as Hurricane Ivan. This severe hurricane dropped large rainfall accumulations in the Delaware River Basin as the storm moved from southwest towards the eastern portions of the United States. The storm weakened from a hurricane status to a tropical depression before affecting the Delaware River Basin. But when the storm first approached the Delaware River, it was categorized as a Category 1 hurricane and slowly transitioned into an extra-tropical transition. This resulted in a heavy rainfall and flooding of the Delaware River and therefore its basin. The second major event took place in 2005, which was associated with an extra-tropical cyclone. This event took place in April, bringing along heavy rainfall that was associated with a rapidly deepening cyclone that made its way towards the east coast. With the strong flow of moisture following the path of the hurricane from the year before, one can imagine how saturated the ground and soils were from such an event. The last major event worth noting is the June 2006 flood. This flood was caused by heavy rainfall from a warm seasonal convection system that approached the east coast. The setting was characterized by a stationary mid-tropospheric trough over the Ohio Valley. A mid-tropospheric trough is caused by the intrusion of energy and wind from the mid-latitudes into the tropic areas of the world. The 2006 storm was characterized by a deep layer of humidity and large values of precipitable water in the atmosphere and Earth's surface. During this particular event, there was a strong moisture transport in the lower atmosphere and heavy rainfall along the western margin of the Appalachian Mountains. With the elevation difference, runoff was a result of the heavy rainfall causing flooding conditions along the Delaware River. As you can see from examining the Doppler image of the three events, the red shading indicated heavy rainfall along the higher elevated areas of the region, which resulted in runoff and flooding conditions of the areas of lower. Many regions of the country may experience droughts and wildfire, but the East Coast is prone to saturated condition due to its location and the prevailing winds bringing storms from the southern regions to the northeastern. The weather the East Coast has experienced over the past decade have included cyclone activity, slow-moving tropical systems, and seasonal fluctuations, which can result in overly saturated terrain, further assisting the floods that occur. With precipitation and rain events not being able to be controlled, those who live in low elevated areas need to be aware of the possibilities of flooding when inhabiting areas close to rivers and low elevations. With these events that occur, studies can show the results of high precipitation events allowing for less damage to be done in future events. With the Delaware River Basin Commission being created, these events that occur along the Delaware River can be studied and watched to prevent further catastrophic events from happening.